Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History's Fave Film Fashion Series. This time around we're heading back to 1959 with Pillow Talk, starring Doris Day and Rock Hudson, with gowns for Doris Day by the legendary glamorous Jean-Louis and jewellery by Les Quins. This gorgeous Technicolor Ross Hunter production was suggested to me by Ultimate Fashion History friends Claire and Rena and Fia Meta. So, ladies, I hope I do you proud with this little video. So, let's take a look at Doris Day's incredible Jean-Louis wardrobe in Pillow Talk and throw in a little bit of fashion history along the way. We know that Pillow Talk is going to be a glamorous fashion-driven movie from the very first shot. We see Doris Day's shapely calf as she slips her feet into these sensational metallic silvery blue kitten-heeled bedroom slippers. Doris Day plays an interior decorator called Jan, and this set represents Jan's apartment. I would like to live on this set. The mid-century modern palette is my favourite colour wave. These coral pinks with mauve and touches of turquoise and that buttery yellow in the background. I also love this set because of the Regency of Hollywood touches like that ornate gold Rococo picture frame that sort of underscores the modernist vibe of the whole thing. Jean-Louis was the master of colour so it's interesting that his very first outfit for Doris Day is black. This black wool coat with narrow collar fur bucket hat, matching fur muff, and these enormous Nile blue lucite buttons, which, when she takes her coat off, you see echo perfectly the Nile blue of her silk skirt suit with three-quarter length sleeves and Napoleon collar, which in the back turns into a shawl collar. What expert tailoring here. Not Content with just looking sensational in the daytime, Doris Day looks great in her pyjamas. Don't you love these silk aqua pyjamas with mandarin collar and tapered trouser? But when I talk about Jean-Louis as the real master of colour, I'm talking about things like this. Take a look at the turned cuffs of the pyjama top. These are in turquoise. The pyjamas are in aqua. Different colours, but in exactly the same colour register. This is what gives Jean-Louis this particular Alain he has when it comes to palette. Again, he's playing around with palette here in this green wool dress. Two different tones of green, but in the same register. So he's reversed it with the pajamas. It's two different colors, the same register with the dress, two different tones, different register. So clever. And this is just so perfect for Technicolor. It's no wonder that Ross Hunter went back to Jean-Louis so often. One of my favorite outfits in Pillow Talk is this, this incredibly simple, but ultra chic, shift dress in champagne wool, pillar box red bucket hat. Here it is again so you can see that split round collar and that wide belt. And here's a close-up just so you can look at this wonderful detailing on her sleeve with the split fold. When she puts her coat on you see that it is lined with silk in exactly the same shade of pillar box red. It's a lamb's wool coat, slightly oversized, which of course comes with a perfectly matching handbag and these wonderful sheared kid gloves. One of the most beloved gowns in Pillow Talk is the one she wears in this wonderful nightclub scene. And why aren't there nightclubs like this anymore? So glamorous. And again, note the palette, the purple and the white. This dress is so impossible to photograph from the screen. I'm showing you first a publicity shot of Doris Day wearing it. You can see it is a boat neck sleeveless long evening gown with a panelled waist that she wears with a bolero length white fur jacket and long silk opera gloves with buttoned wrists. 
and of course it's backless with that sweet little bow right in the small of her back. Here's a detail so you can see that beautiful sweeping ruching effect that Jean-Louis has created finished with this diamante brooch and please take a look at those fabulous Lacan emerald and diamond earrings. Why don't I own jewellery like this? Why don't I live this kind of life? And here's another shot, not so great, just so you can see how the whole ensemble hangs together. Boy, oh boy, was that Jean-Louis taking names with his wardrobe in Pillow Talk. Have you ever seen such an elegant evening coat in emerald green satin with angel sleeves and pilgrim collar? Now, I'm not usually a big fan of the pilgrim collar. Let's face it, few people are. But in this case, I'll make an exception. You'll notice that the coat is in the trapeze silhouette. Now, Yves Saint Laurent for Dior had only just created the trapeze silhouette, so this was completely on trend as we say today. When Doris removes this coat, she is wearing a spaghetti strapped chiffon, I think it's chiffon, wiggle dress with ruched bodice in exactly the same tone of emerald green. This is a trick that Jean-Louis does again later on in the movie with this crimson velvet evening coat with this simple crimson velvet wiggle dress in exactly the same shade of crimson. I know these two reds don't read the same in these pictures, but on screen they are. And take a look at all of those Lake Can rubies, the ruby ring, the ruby bracelet, the ruby necklace. Speaking of jewelry, in Pillow Talk, Doris Day gets to wear this spectacular turquoise gold and diamond necklace with matching earrings by Le Cain. If it looks familiar to you, it might be because another UFH favorite, Miss Lana Turner, wears exactly the same jewelry in imitation of life from the same year. Either Jean-Louis or the studio had a wonderful relationship with Le Cain. Perhaps the dress that I'd most like to own from Pillow Talk is this one, the cream wool ribbed dress with standing funnel collar, teamed with the beige check coat with two-toned fur. I do it in faux fur, though. And yet this is the outfit I think most people associate with Pillow Talk, the pillar box red wool coat with matching hat and muff in leopard print so striking red and leopard or red and cheetah or red and jaguar go so well together that it's no wonder that just a couple of years later hubert de givenchy did more or less the same thing with audrey hepburn in Chavrade. We never really see Doris Day standing up in this dress, which is a pity because it could be my favourite in Pillow Talk. This three-quarter length sleeve mustard yellow dress with pussy bow neck. Here it is again. She's put the phone down so you can see how it is tied at the neck with this brooch. And there is also a pocket feature on the bodice. I think we can all agree that these are fabulous clothes. And what I love about Jean-Louis and his costumes during this era, the late 50s through the Kennedy era, is that although they are extremely glamorous, they also belong in the real world, meaning that these were truly inspirational or aspirational wardrobes. Regular woman could go to the movies and see Doris Day in Jean-Louis or see Lana Turner in Jean-Louis and be inspired by their glamour to the extent that they would then go to Macy's or Gimbel's and find something similar. Another thing I think we can all agree on is that these clothes are fantastic. But I wonder, as do many, why people don't want to look this way anymore. We can look at it on screen and agree that it looks fabulous. And yet, fashion writers and fashion bloggers still tell us we should want to look like this. It's something that we discuss an awful lot over on the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group. You should join if you haven't already. We always have lots to discuss. This is a street style picture that appeared on the internet. I just picked it up and, oh, this girl looks so great. She looks so trendy. She looks trend forward. 
People dressed like this in the 1990s. Actually, punk rockers dressed like this in the 1970s. I dressed like this in the 1990s. Why do we still want to look this way? I really would have thought that by now fashion would have reverted again to something a little more elegant. Although I do have to say the girl is very pretty, of course, and that dog is very cute. I want to talk just a little about the makeup in Pillow Talk. So many of my students think that makeup in the 1950s was all about dramatic cat eyes and a lot of red lip. Well, towards the end of the decade, especially, and then through the Kennedy era, we really see a much softer palette in makeup. I love Doris Day's makeup in Pillow Talk. This very healthy peachy glow with a coral lipstick and that very modified cat eye with the dark liner on top. And then, Miss Day, will you blink for us, please? Thank you. We can see the wonderful turquoise eyeshadow and the false eyelashes. It was a very gentle look that really ties into that whole mid-century colour wave that is so beloved to me. Just indulge me in a bit of family history for a second. Those of you who follow the channel know that my father is David Wolfe, who's sort of a big fashion forecaster, but at the beginning of his career he was an illustrator and commercial artist, and it's something he's returned to in recent years as a hobby. He creates paper dolls of movie stars from the Golden Age and their wardrobes. Well, a few years ago, he was honoured to do the Celebration Doris Day paper doll. I think to celebrate her 90th birthday, he worked closely with Pierre Patrick, Miss Day's close friend and biographer on the book, and he got to speak to Doris Day herself on a few occasions. I asked him what she was like, and he said, she's just like Doris Day. She was warm and kind and funny and helpful, and she remembered all of her movie costumes and was very keen that only the best ones were duplicated in the paper doll book. So, of course, the book contains many of her costumes from different movies, including some of the costumes we've been talking about today from Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk does have a happy ending, but not before Doris Day as Jan, the interior decorator, takes Rock Hudson's very masculine mid-century modern apartment and out of spite transforms it into what was then perceived in 1959 as a nightmare of technicolor nostalgic baubles and beads and purple and Tiffany lamps and Victorian furniture and 19th century funnel fires and draped Indian fabrics and antiques out of place and Edwardian gramophone players and he is horrified of course everybody was and this must have gotten such a huge laugh in 1959 and it always strikes me as hilarious that just six or seven years later this nightmare interior would actually be the trendy interior of choice. And people would probably, in the mid to late 60s, pay an interior decorator like Jan to create exactly the environment she created for Rock Hudson out of spite. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fave Film Fashion on the Ultimate Fashion History. Join that Facebook group. We always have a lot of fun over there. I'll be back very soon. So click the little circle to subscribe to more Fave Film Fashion and other stuff on the Ultimate Fashion History channel. And as always, thanks ever so much for watching.